Good afternoon to you all. Welcome indeed to this very first Coffee Break Catch Up, which is going live both on Facebook and on YouTube for the first time. We are delighted to be able to reach a, a larger audience today. We are live on the Coffee Break Languages channel, on the Coffee Break uh, French, Spanish and Italian channels on Facebook and also on YouTube. So it's fantastic to see lots of you here. Um, let us know where you're watching. Let us know what language you're learning. And of course, say hello in the chat and we'll hopefully have the chance to say hello to you a little later on. So what is coming up? Uh, well, first of all, I should introduce myself. If you don't know me, I'm Mark from Coffee Break Languages. I'm the, the founder and CEO of Coffee Break Languages. And it's my job to, to organize everything, to keep everything on uh, track and work with a fantastic team of uh, language teachers and professionals putting together all the Coffee Break Languages courses. Now, the Coffee Break Catch-Up is a regular weekly show where we update you on all things language learning, where we talk a little bit about uh, different things related to language learning and also share some cultural ideas which you may find useful um, in terms of, of things that you might be able to do this weekend if you, are happen, if you happen to be in a place where the language that you're learning is spoken. So let me just check that everything is going okay. I think we have got uh, the comments here that they're coming in okay. I'm able to see them and we will be saying hello to you later on. But for now, I think we should get started and uh, I'll just double check that we can see the slides here. Uh, that's what's coming up. We've got coffee, coffee break updates for you. The talking point and this week's talking point is all about language learning, but language learning in schools or language learning later in life. And then we also have our cultural roundup um, coming up later on. So that's what you can look forward to. Let us get straight on with the show and focus on some uh, uh, coffee break news. Okay, so it's time for this week's Coffee Break News, and there's quite a bit to share with you. We're going to talk a little about some of the, the episodes that we've re recently released, and then also share some you know, some exclusive information. This is first the first mention of this particular project, um, and we'll be sharing that in just a moment. So let me bring my slides in again. Our Coffee Break News begins this week with uh, the most recent episode of Coffee Break Spanish, and that's En Marcha con Coffee Break Spanish. This is our series where we are in the south of Spain, and in this particular episode, we were in the city of Malaga taking a tapas tour. And that was a fantastic uh, experience to learn all about the, the cultural and the, the gastronomic traditions in, in Malaga, in the south of Spain. And this Una Aventura Gastronomica episode is available on the Coffee Break Spanish uh, page. And you can access that, of course, through the Coffee Break Spanish podcast. If you're already learning Spanish, then Coffee Break Spanish uh, in Marcha is an advanced course. It's an intermediate to advanced course, and you will be able to build your vocabulary with that. Now, for French learners, we have just released the third episode in our magazine series. This is the Coffee Break French magazine, and uh, this focused on the film La Belle et la Bête. Now, La Belle et la Bête, you may be thinking it's the Beauty and the Beast, um, or Beauty and the Beast. It's not the Disney version that we've been talking about, however. It's a very famous classic of French cinema created by Jean Cocteau. Now, the, the place that you see on that image there is actually the Cocteau Museum in Menton, a place that is very close to my heart because that's where I spent a, a lot of time living in Menton before the Cocteau Museum was in, established. There was a smaller museum in the Bastion, which is open at the moment. The Cocteau Museum actually is closed for renovations and they are installing new uh, new exhibitions there at the moment. So one of our learners who saw the, the photo on Instagram this week made mentioned that it was closed, so uh, the, 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 the museum may be closed, but obviously the episode is still there and you can find out all about Cocteau's famous film La Belle et la Bête in our third episode of the Coffee Break French magazine. Now, when we are continuing to, to publish content, it's not just our Coffee Break French and Spanish and, Ger and German and Italian content that we're working on. At the moment, we're also launching a series of one-minute language lessons on YouTube. Now, these are courses that are made up of 10 lessons, and uh, every lesson is just two or three minutes. 
we didn't really want to call it two or three minute French or two, two or three minute Italian and so on. So we decided to go for one minute. And we have just announced or we've just launched our one minute Greek course. So if you like, this is an espresso shot of a coffee break, but this time with Greek. And you can access our one minute Greek course on YouTube, on our YouTube channel. So if you're already here on YouTube, you'll be able to find one minute Greek uh, on our channel very easily. And it's a series of 10 lessons teaching you the absolute basics of Greek. So do have a look for that. Okay, so that is One Minute Greek. Also in our news this week, we have the most recent le lesson of uh, Coffee Break Spanish To Go. Now, if you're not familiar with the To Go series, this is where you take what you've learned in Coffee Break Spanish and you take it on the road, as it were. Because on To Go, we basically talk to lots of native speakers on the streets of Spain. And I've actually got a small, a short clip of this most recent episode to show you here. So the question in this episode is, what do you do in your free time? ¿Cuáles son tus pasatiempos? ¿Qué haces en tus ratos libres? As it says on the screen. ¿Qué haces en tu tiempo libre? So let's have a look at this video. This is Marina in the, the city of Málaga again. And Marina is asking the question, ¿Qué haces en tu tiempo libre? Hola amigos y bienvenidos a un nuevo capítulo de Coffee Break Spanish to Go. La pregunta de hoy es, ¿Qué haces en tu tiempo libre? Y más formal, ¿Qué hace usted en su tiempo libre? Lo repito, ¿Qué haces en tu tiempo libre? Y más formal, ¿Qué hace usted en en su tiempo libre. A mí, por ejemplo, me gusta pasear por el parque. Ahora vamos a escuchar las respuestas de la gente. A mí me gusta salir con las amigas. Eh, yo juego a baloncesto. En mi tiempo libre me gusta jugar al fútbol, quedar con mis amigos, nadar, ir a la playa, etc. En mi tiempo libre juego al baloncesto, eh, bailo, y salgo con mi amiga. Jugar a fútbol y leer. Yo mira la tele, ir a bailar. Y todo. Pues me gusta mucho hacer deporte, ir al gimnasio, ir a correr. Me gusta también bailar, salir de fiesta con mis amigas y estas cosas. Genial. Ahora es tu turno. Tengo una pregunta para ti. ¿Tú qué haces en tu tiempo libre? ¡Fantástico! Pues esto es todo. Nos vemos en el próximo capítulo de Coffee Break Spanish to Go. ¡Hasta pronto! So that is Coffee Break Spanish to Go. And we actually have Coffee Break Spanish to Go uh, as part of a, a wider series because we have also Coffee Break German to Go and we're publishing ongoing lessons of Coffee Break German to Go. And I'm very pleased to announce that we will be soon launching a Coffee Break Italian to Go. Um, we mentioned that in last week's catch up. And also we have been working on some Coffee Break French to Go. So you'll have the whole range of French, Italian, Spanish and German very soon on our YouTube channel. And we're looking forward to uh, the, the launch of all of that. So that's Coffee Break Spanish to Go, the latest episode available now. Now, there is one other thing that I would like to talk about, and that is a new project, a new thing that we're going to be launching next week. Next Friday is the Fête de la Musique, uh, the festival of music in French-speaking countries. And uh, to link in with that, we are starting a new series every Tuesday, and it's called Tune for Tuesday. Now, Tune for Tuesday is where we are suggesting a, a tune, a song, which has been recorded in the, the, the foreign language. So it might be French, it might be Spanish, it might be a whole range of languages. And every Tuesday, we'll post this song along with uh, the links to the song, where you can either watch the song on YouTube or you can uh, access the song on Spotify. And we're going to be creating a playlist every Tuesday of the, well, we're going to be adding to this playlist every Tuesday with new songs. So we've been asked lots in the past for suggestions on, on useful songs to listen to, particularly which have a, a focus on a particular area of grammar, for example, or just good songs to listen to. And we're really excited about launching Tune for Tuesday um, on Tuesday next week. So you can start to enjoy our uh, tunes for Tuesday and you can also subscribe to our Spotify playlist and get access to all of that. That will be starting on uh, Tuesday the 18th of June. 
coming up next week then. Okay, that is our coffee break news for today. So it's now time to move on to our talking point. The talking point, uh, which is uh, basically an opportunity to have a little bit of a chat about language learning. Thank you for posting your comments. I'm seeing uh, lots of comments here and we will be getting back to you very soon uh, with these comments. But for now, we're going to move on uh, to our talking point for this week. Okay, so the talking point for this week is all about language learning and language learning particularly in schools versus language learning perhaps later in life as an adult. There have been a lot of uh, reports in the press recently about uh, language learning in schools and I think many of them unfairly giving uh, language teachers a, a bit of a, of a bad deal. Language teachers, in my experience, have been wonderful and wonderful inspirational people. Um, I know certainly from my own experience um, as, a, as a learner, I was inspired by my language teachers. And I think sometimes the problem in schools is that it's sometimes difficult to help young people understand the the value of learning a language and I know many many language teachers are doing a fantastic job but we wanted to ask you your thoughts on this what were your experiences like of learning a language when you were at school I would imagine that many of you who are watching this will, will perhaps not no longer be at school there may be some school students watching this too and you're very very welcome but if you are perhaps uh, later in life and you've moved on from a, a school then perhaps you are are revisiting a language that you learned at school or tackling a new language. We've put together a little video to, to give you some things to think about here and then we'll be having a chat in the, the comments and we can look forward to your thoughts there. So let's have a, a watch of this video and then we'll chat about uh, learning languages in school versus language le learning languages later in life. I would imagine if you're watching this then you're already thinking about learning a new language now indeed the chances are you're learning a new language with one of our courses but I'd love to know what you think about this. There's a, there are already a couple of, of comments in the, the, the chat I see, but I would love to know what your thoughts are on learning a language in school versus learning a language in later life. Has it been a different experience for you uh, learning the language, perhaps when you've got a different reason to learn? Very often the motivation is the, the, the key thing in any learning experience. So if you're learning for a purpose, then that's when you you want to do more, you want to learn more, you want to use the language uh, in, in an opportunity. That may be because you're learning for work or you're learning for family reasons or something like that. I remember at, at school, I was I, I had a, a teacher called uh, Mrs. MacArthur. She was a wonderful, wonderful teacher and completely inspired me to learn languages and to continue working on, on my languages and indeed, she probably was the person who inspired me to become a language teacher. And as a teacher in school, I wanted to share my love of, of language learning, just as Mrs. MacArthur had done with me. So 
I think that, that, that there are many, many teachers who are, who are doing a wonderful job of, of inspiring younger learners. But also, there are many people who are involved in, in adult education and learning or, or teaching, rather, languages in, in adult classes. So what are your thoughts on this? Have you had good experiences when you've been learning either in, in school, when you were at school, or indeed perhaps in an adult cl class, in a course? Or do you prefer learning on your own and using your, your own experiences and your own uh, access to technology and so on? Of course, technology has changed things so much. Um, we, we get access to so many more things now through technology. But I'd love to know your thoughts. And what we're going to do is give you one minute to write your comments in the chat and then we'll have a, a, a back and forward about that um, in the chat. So let us bring up this question and uh, I'll bring up a timer and I'd love to hear your responses. I'm looking carefully in the chat to see what you're saying. Okay, so um, I can see that we've definitely got some uh, comments here. So let's have a look at the comments. I hope that the the video and audio is okay because I'm seeing a, a bit of a lag here, but hopefully you're you're able to understand me and uh, everything is going according to plan. So we've definitely got a, a, quite a number of comments here. Let's have a look. Um, Nicole, I think I can bring this onto the screen. There we go. Nicole is saying, I learned French at school, though my teacher said I was good. I thought I lacked confidence. Now I'm learning Italian. I wish they had more interactive learning, not only in a classroom with a book. Indeed, Nicole, thank you for that. Uh, let's also uh, see, uh, yeah, we've got Heather here who's saying, I went to college to learn American Sign Language and become an interpreter for the deaf. There was a clear purpose, immersion into the deaf community it was vital. Fantastic, Heather. Paul is saying, I'm a Spanish teacher at an elementary school and the course is full of music and movement and the students seem to love it. I think that's brilliant in elementary and primary schools where the, the students are able to really get involved and, and use music and and, uh, and dance and movement and so on. I guess the difficulty comes when puberty hits and they no longer want to be moving around and singing and, and dancing and it gets a little bit uncool to, to put on a different accent, which is, is perhaps one of the most difficult challenges that teachers uh, experience. Nicole saying, I would have loved to have coffee break languages at school. I wished I had the option of Italian at school. I find learning languages now is good to learn about new horizons and cultures and people. Absolutely. I think we, we are, as adults, we're, we're more open to that. Um, and I guess the, the difficulty is trying to encourage children to, to uh, be open to that too. Um, Heather saying, sadly, there's not an Italian community in Missoula, so I'm thankful for technology. And technology is, is very much a, a helpful thing in all of this. Anna saying, my French lessons in, at school in Glasgow in the 60s were a nightmare. Oh dear, I cauchemar. The teacher was always off sick. Lessons taken by a student who couldn't control the class, now learning Italian because I love the country. Well, I hope that you're enjoying learning Italian um, and uh, that, that certainly will, will help. Uh, Anita is saying, I've taken English and German at school and it took me a while to enjoy it. Once I was able to communicate in English, I was motivated to do better. But only when I moved to Scotland, I took English seriously. I can't remember much of my school German now as an adult. I'm learning Spanish just because I love the language. It takes me longer to learn as I don't have much spare time, but I'm definitely more motivated. So again, it's that question of motivation. Thank you for that, Anita. Um, we have Lady Dragonbane who is saying, I feel it's easier to learn as, a ladder, as an adult now that I have more resources and interesting topics. 
It's fantastic that so many of you are contributing to this and we're getting comments both on YouTube and on Facebook. So it's brilliant to be able to bring everyone together. Paul is saying learning a foreign language in school is much more difficult as an adult, especially if there's no immersion. Absolutely. And Meredith is saying that, I think, is Meredith uh, the person who said, let me just look back here because we had, yeah, Meredith first of all said earlier, I'm a primary school teacher in Australia. Our students learn Chinese via video link up with China. It's really interesting. Meredith, first of all, I should say that I think it's pretty late for you now. So I hope you get to bed soon if you are in Australia. It's a rare thing that we have Australians watching live. Um, but Meredith also said, I grew up in the 80s and 90s in a small county, country town in Australia. My only access to a language other than English was a Japanese exchange teacher who came for a couple of months. As an adult, I've gone to night school to learn Auslan, which is Australian Sign Language, and now using CBF to learn French. Thank you very much indeed for your comment, and don't stay up too late, Meredith. Um, Paul is saying it's been way easier and more fun as an adult. Uh, more choice now and greater freedom in how I learn. Fantastic. Sergio or Sergio is saying learning English was simple as it was almost natively uh, living here in the Mexico US border. We've got so many comments today, it's brilliant. Kathy is saying my study of French and Spanish in high school was good. I wish I had been able to start younger and did even at that time wish they would let us start younger. As an adult, it's quite difficult, but I'm not giving up because the rewards are many. I think as adults, we, we see those rewards more and we actually see the benefit of, of the hard work because let's face it, it can be harder work when you're an adult because of time, because of opportunities. Jennifer saying, I had one good teacher in school and one not so good teacher, which made learning very frustrating. On the other hand, it was easier learning when I was younger, but as an adult, I'm better able to ask questions and find the resources I need in order to learn. My goodness me, we've got so many, so many responses here. Um, Nicole, though I've enjoyed learning at an Italian school, I was in full immersion, which was so difficult, but worth it. I think children finding connection to learn is important, not just it being a subject. This is something whenever I I, I get the opportunity to speak quite uh, quite often to, to school students. And the main message I have for them is that learning a language or the, the language itself is so much more than just the subject that they do uh, three or four hours a week. It's a, a living thing, a thing that, that young people just like them um, will will experience in, in many different ways. They're using that that language to to tell jokes, to watch their favourite show on TV, um, to to laugh, to to pester their parents and annoy their parents and, and argue with people and to 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 fall in love and and all this kind of thing. So the the language is so 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 powerful. And if young people can understand that the, the language is more than just a school subject, then that's really important. Sandra saying, I enjoyed learning French at school, but learning German as a lang at a language school has been an adult, sorry, has, has, has it been disaster for, sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm not following this. Learning German at a language school has been a disaster for Sandra. I hope that learning German through Coffee Break German has been, has been useful to you. Barbara uh, saying, 50 years ago, um, I was learning French. Her two teachers were from France. Starting Coffee Break French a few years ago, I discovered I still remember my teacher's instructions on how to say the R sound. Now working on Italian on my own with the ma marvellous magic of internet with Coffee Break Italian. Thank you, Barbara. Um, and we hope you, you've received your mug. If you've not, I'm sure it will be on its way. Curon is saying, Herr Pike, my, ger my hero German teacher, inspired me. I try to do the same with my pupils. The internet has been a game changer. The resources available allow anyone to learn anywhere. Absolutely. Um, we are going to have to move on because we do have a time limit. Thank you all so much for all these comments. We will respond to the comments uh, on, on each of the, the, the pages. We're a little bit overwhelmed with all these comments today, and I really do appreciate everyone uh, answering uh, my question. Okay. It is time to move on from uh, these uh, the, the comments and our talking point. Thank you so much uh, for, for your, your messages there. But we're now going to move on to uh, the third part of our show, and that is uh, our culture section. So here goes for our cultural roundup of what's happening. Correct slides here. We should have our cultural roundup slides here. Um, and I can bring in our first bit of culture, and that is the Infiorata. And the Infiorata is a beautiful festival that happens throughout Italy. And it's on its uh, it's already started. In fact, it starts today. 
and this is the Flower Carpet Festival. And basically, what happens is that the there are, are flower carpets made all through different towns in uh, in Italy, and the artists prepare their designs months in advance creating simple geometric pictures, tapestries, and then religious masterpieces using dried and fresh flowers, petals. Um, and they also use other materials like wood cuttings and, and beans and so on. So the, de the, the designs are, are sketched with, uh, with chalk, first of all, and then the, the chalk areas are filled in with the, the flower petals. And these form carpets of flowers uh, representing various things uh, through, throughout many towns in Italy. So um, the, the link for this will be sent out in tomorrow's catch-up email newsletter. So if you're not already subscribed to the catch-up email newsletter, then you need to go to radiolingua.com slash newsletter. Now, the team will put that um, in the, the comments so that you'll be able to, to sign up for that newsletter. And we'll send out a link with an article in Italian about this and also in English. And we do that for each of our cultural points. So you can find out more about the Infiorata in our newsletter. Let me bring my slides back in here. Um, so that's the Infiorata. Let's move on to another uh, cultural point here, if I can find my cursor, there we go. So this is the Roc des Alpes, the Roc des Alpes. Now this is, uh, it's not, it's, it's definitely a little more active than the Infiorata because it's all about VTT. Now, if you're not sure what VTT is, it stands for Vélo Tout Terrain. So if you've got a vélo, which is a, a bicycle, and it's tout terrain, that's all terrain, so if it's an all-terrain bike, then we're looking at uh, mountain biking. So this is a mountain biking festival that happens in the Alps, in the resort of La Clusa, and it's happening this weekend. It's renowned for its, uns well, La Clusa is renowned for its unspoilt environment, and it's 196 kilometers of marked paths. So the competition lasts for three days. It's open to everyone. And some of the challenges even involve having to go up the mountain in ski lifts in order to be able to cycle down the mountain. So if you're interested in, in mountain biking, then perhaps you'd like to take part in the Roc des Alpes or indeed simply watch the Roc des Alpes. Staying with sport and moving to Spain, it's the MotoGP in Catalonia in Barcelona this weekend. So this is, of course, the, the motorbike racing uh, competition. It's a, a, the, the Grand Prix, if you like, of, of motorbikes. And it takes place at the Circuit de, de Barcelona in the town of Montbello, which is just about 25 kilometers north of Barcelona. Now, you can, you can get a three-day ticket for this, and there are discounts available if you go for full, all three days. So if you are interested in motor racing, and indeed motor bike racing, then you may be interested in checking out the MotoGP in Barcelona this weekend. Okay, final cultural idea, and again, all of these will be provided with links in our newsletter. Our final suggestions, actually, there's two of these, and they're both involving music, but music of very different kinds. First of all, die Salzburger Dult. Die Salzburger Dult is the biggest folk festival in Western Austria, and it's an annual event that attracts old and young, full of traditional folk music. It's actually the 46th time that this uh, festival is taking place. It was originally founded in spring as a celebration in, the, in honour of St. Rupert, the patron saint of Salzburg, and now it takes place around Pentecost. Now, there are, are many uh, attractions for the, the Salzburger, the Sal, the Salzburger Dult, um, and there, in addition to the music and festivals, there's food and there's dancing, and of course, there's also the fun fair. Uh, the Dult word, the word Dult, is often referred to as a fun fair in southeastern uh, Germany and uh, Austria and, and Switzerland. So that's the, the Salzburger Dult happening already. It, fin it, it finishes uh, this Sunday. Now, we also have another German suggestion for you, a German language suggestion, also happening in Austria, and that's Nova Rock. And Nova Rock is the Austria's biggest rock festival. Um, this takes place uh, every June, and uh, you can enjoy some fantastic rock music at the Nova Rock Festival. It takes place in uh, the, the well, near the town of Nikolsdorf, in the, the area at the furthest eastern part of, of Austria, near the Hungarian and the Slovak border. 
So that is taking place on the 13th to the 16th of June. And as I said, you can get the, the articles for all of these, the links for all of these in our catch up newsletter, which will go out tomorrow. So if you're not already subscribed to the newsletter, make sure you do so. Okay, that is our cultural information for this week, but we'd also like to bring in something else, and that is share some of the reviews that we've been delighted to receive this week, uh, both in Facebook and in podcast reviews. So just let me bring these slides back in. We wanted to share some of these with you. If, if you have uh, been enjoying Coffee Break, then make sure you leave us a review, either on Facebook or indeed in the, the podcast app that, that you use. So Sadie on Facebook said that Coffee Break Chinese is absolutely brilliant. It's easy to just to pop on the podcast on my way to work. Mark and Crystal make it super easy to learn. Thank you, Sadie, for that review. Um, and uh, we are delighted that you're enjoying uh, Coffee Break Chinese. We have another review on Facebook of German, Coffee Break German. Julie said, my conversational German has definitely improved a huge amount and I'm so keen to find out when season three will be out. Well, season three of Coffee Break German won't be out soon. It will be out at some point, but what we will be launching soon is a German version of the Coffee Break magazine. So it will lead on from uh, season two very well. In fact, I always say when you're, you're learning a language, there's only so far that you can go forward. Um, when, when you're learning a language, you, at the start, you move forward, you move forward, you move forward, and then it gets to a point that you can't keep going forward. You have to move out the way and go forward in a more in a wider way, basically. So that's what we're trying to do with the Coffee Break magazine. As you've done season one and season two, you get to a point and then you need to expand your vocabulary, expand your experience of the language that you've learned to that stage. And that's what the magazine is all about. So we'll be launching Coffee Break German magazine later in the year. We're working on that at the moment. So uh, Julie's saying she now listens to repeats of season two to cement the words and grammar into my head but desperate to further improve with the next season bring it on. Well as I say you will be able to enjoy some new content from Coffee Break German uh, soon. Thank you Julie. Now on uh, Apple Podcast Review this is Molly Wobbles and um, Molly Wobbles is saying and Molly Wobbles has got three B's in it apparently this is my first time writing a review and I just wanted to say that this podcast totally changed the way I think about language learning uh, sorry learning language and makes me feel very capable of lessons weaving grammar without you knowing just like humans learn their first language I love it merci beaucoup Molly Wobbles we are delighted to see that you're enjoying Coffee Break one final one, and this is from Barnstable, or Barnstable, again in Apple Podcasts. Barnstable is saying, I love this informal and conversational method of teaching Italian. It feels like you're in the room with a few mates, but you come out with a few new words and grammar from each session. I just hope I'm not learning Italian with a Scottish accent. Great work, thanks to the team. Well, we can con we can happily confirm that you're not learning Italian with a Scottish accent. Um, Francesca's Italian is, of course, pure Italian, and, well, she says that my accent isn't too bad either. So that is just a, a few reviews. Uh, we are delighted to receive reviews and if you have got anything that you'd like to, to share with us about what you feel about Coffee Break Italian then please do leave a review uh, either on Facebook so that other people can see that you're enjoying it and indeed on uh, podcasts where you can also see that. Okay we are almost done for this episode. Um, we do have some questions, I see, and I'm going to try and answer these uh, questions as well as I can because we've just had so many comments in this, um, so I'm going to do my best here. We will also say hello to some of you uh, very quickly. So we've got Ulysses joining. Bonjour, Ulysses. We've got Cathy. We've got Dot joining, studying for Spanish. We've got Terry, who is in London, learning Italian. Belinda is está en el tren. Eh, eh, de Madrid a Toledo, pues muy bien. I hope that you're getting a good signal and it's still enjoying this. Uh, Barbara's felice di tornare in Idaho per guardare dal vivo questa settimana. So Barbara's delighted to be back in Idaho watching live this week. Uh, Paul is in St. Clair, Pennsylvania. Um, we also have uh, Carol joining us from Canada. Fa bel tempo qui, caldissimo. Ah, sono contento. Fantastic. I'm glad it's good weather there. Um, who else do we have? Lou is saying that she's learning Spanish with Coffee Break Spanish. And now progress to season four. I like your podcast very, very much. Thank you. We've got Natalia saying bonjour. Uh, Angie is learning Italian. Uh, Nicole's also learning Italian. Um, and Sandra is from Berlin trying to learn German. 
I love this comment. Nicole is saying, oggi, oggi è Italy Week a little. Ho comprato molte cose di cibi, di cibi italiano e al momento scragnocchiando i tarala, tarallini mentre guardando si vi caccia. Fantastic. Well done, Nicole. Um, I hope you enjoy your, your Italian delicacies from Little this week. I'm sure there are other supermarkets we can't just mention Little. Um, okay, I'm going to skip forward to some of the questions and comments that we have had just recently. Um, so, uh, uh, let me just look here. We've got a question from uh, MB Solomon who's saying, is there any plan to revive those language meditations again? I forget the, what they were called, but they were French conjugations that lull you to sleep. I think what you're referring to is the verb cast. Now, the verb cast was a project that I did before coffee break. Um, I was involved in a, in a project, again, we're talking about languages education, and the verb cast was all about trying to look at different ways of helping young people learn uh, the language. And we put together the verb cast, which was a series of 28 uh, lessons that were done in a kind of meditation style. And it is something that we are wondering about looking at further. So if you think you would like to hear um, language learning combined with meditation and mindfulness and, and all that kind of thing, then let us know because we are always uh, interested in, in finding more things. So uh, MB Solomon is saying, yes, you would be interested in that. Well, that is something that we will consider. Um, we, will, we will definitely look at that. Um, we've got a few more hellos. We've got Moira saying it. she is living in Tenerife, so it's helped a great, a, a great deal. We also have Bria saying that uh, Bria is studying Italian, so confused how to use più, pue, poco, etc. in Italian. Well, funny you should say that, because if you have got a question about Coffee Break Italian, or indeed in a question about any of our languages, then you can ask us a question and we can answer the question in a future episode. So I do think I've got these slides here. Let me just bring them back in. Um, I should have the slides here. Yes, so if you've got a question, then simply go to coffeebreakquestions.com or you can email radiolingua at gmail.com. So Bria, if you would like to ask us how to use pew and poco and, and so on, all these little words that sound the same, then why not record a voicemail and send that to radiolingua at gmail.com and then we could actually answer the question in a future edition of the Coffee Break Sp uh, Italian magazine. And the same goes for Coffee Break French, Coffee Break German, Coffee Break Italian and Coffee Break Spanish. So if you've got a question, then we'd love to hear from you. Please send us the questions. Simply go to coffeebreakquestions.com where you can ask the question there on uh, the website or alternatively head to uh, the, voice, the, the voicemail app, or, sorry, the voice messages app on your phone and record your uh, question there and then just email it to radiolingua at gmail.com. And Bria is saying, thanks, I'll do it now. You're my hero. <laughs> well, thank you. Uh, you tell everyone about our lessons. Uh, well, please continue to do so. And if you're going to be featuring on the, a future edition of the podcast, then you'll have all the more reason uh, to tell everyone about our lessons. I think that is almost it for this week. Just a reminder that we are uh, looking for your postcards. So if you would like to send us a postcard and let us know about your language learning experience, then you can do so. That is our address and we'd love to receive your postcards. Um, and of course, at the end of every month, so that will be happening in two weeks time, we will be drawing uh, two postcards out of a hat and we'll be sending a coffee break mug to the winners of, uh, uh, well, to, to the senders of those postcards. So if you would like to win an exclusive coffee break mug, and I don't have one sitting here because I've just got a glass of water beside me, um, but I've got, uh, I'll, I'll need to bring the coffee break mugs next time. In fact, I do remember I've got one here behind me. Um. I'll just get one off the shelf here. So we've got our Coffee Break mugs. If you would like to win an exclusive Coffee Break mug, then you can do so uh, potentially by sending us a postcard to 100 West George Street, Glasgow, G21PP, of course, in the United Kingdom. Um, do send us your questions. Uh, and just let me take this off. Um, Nicole is saying that she sent a, a postcard for this month. Incrociamo le dita. Indeed. And Lena, I love the comment there. You're the one of the best teachers I have ever had. Thank you for everything, Mark. Thank you, Lena. That has made my day. 
That is it for today. It has been a fantastic uh, afternoon speaking to so many of you. I'm so delighted that we've had lots and lots of comments here. It's been wonderful to see all your comments. Just remember that if you would like to get the uh, the newsletter for uh, Coffee Break Languages, that goes out tomorrow. And that will be sent out in the, the morning. So we'll be sending that out with all the links for uh the the cultural topics and all the the most recent episodes that we've sent so just make sure you subscribe to our newsletter and you can do so at radiolingua.com slash newsletter um and i thought i had a thing to put on the screen with that but i'm sure that's been posted in the comments so radiolingua.com slash newsletter and we can uh, you can make sure you're subscribed there the other thing i need to tell you especially if you're watching on youtube please make sure that you are subscribed to our Coffee Break Languages YouTube channel. Now, you need to do two things here. First of all, there is a subscribe button uh, just uh, beside this video on the, the screen, I believe. I'm looking here at my screen and I can't see one, obviously, but there must be a subscribe button. Um, or simply click on Coffee Break Languages and uh, click the, the subscribe button there. But the other thing that you need to do that is click the little bell icon that appears to accept the notifications. And that means when we post a new video, either a live video like this, or indeed a, a, a normal video that we, we post regularly, then you'll get a notification to say that there's a new video available from the Coffee Break Languages channel. And that way you will be uh, updated. So that's for, for YouTube. So make sure you're subscribed on YouTube. And of course, you can follow us on Facebook um, if you're not doing so already. One final thing, that is Instagram. We post almost every day on Instagram and there is lots and lots of discussion on Instagram today. The question is, I don't have this, I can't show you here because my phone's over there, but the question today is, where would your ideal coffee break be and with whom? So if you head over to instagram.com slash coffee break languages, and again, perhaps the team could put the, the link um, then the, there you will be able to find our Coffee Break Languages Instagram channel and you can answer that question there. Where would your ideal Coffee Break language, uh, sorry, Coffee Break, I'll start again. Where would your ideal Coffee Break be and with whom? Uh, and it doesn't need to be language related, we'd just love to know where your Coffee Break would be. I think uh, that is it for today. It's been a long episode. I hope you've enjoyed it. It's been lovely speaking to you. Um, uh, oh, just a couple other comments here. Um, before we go, Raoul's saying, I wish you could have been my teacher in all subjects, Mark. Thank you very much. And Jennifer is saying, Bonjour, Mark. Our driver from our hotel on the Porte de, Mon the Porte de Monaco to Monte Carlo was from Menton. I said, oh, la fête de Citron. And she was extremely impressed that I knew that. Thank you for making it so easy for me to connect quickly to the locals. Jennifer, thank you. Everyone, thank you. It's been a pleasure speaking to you this afternoon. It's always a pleasure uh, doing the, the, the catch up and, of course, making all our Coffee Break courses. Huge thanks to the team for uh, everything, <laughs> always, and, of course, for helping us in the background, answering all these questions and um, posting the, the links and so on on the comments. Thank you very much indeed. We will be back next week with another Coffee Break catch up. Um, until then... I'll see. Uh, I'm trying to find the right button to press here. Uh, that says, I'll say thank you. Oh, I've got to say it in a foreign language. And this week we've done uh, Greek. So I will say, Efkaristopoli, and Dios.